Hello, my amazing bloomers. I'm so happy to be back with you all for another week. Um, I absolutely miss you all when we aren't able to do these discussions. But today I have a very, very special treat for you all. We have a two-time bikini champion here today on Bloom, and I am so excited to intro introduce you all to her. Um, a lot of times when we watch these competitions online, we may see them uh, in the most beautiful gowns and bikinis and four inch high heels. But what a lot of people don't realize is that there are months and months and sometimes a year of preparation that goes into uh, preparing for this competition. And I know just, you know, from the outside looking in, it has to um, be very challenging on your body physically, but also mentally. And so I asked our next guest, Ada, to be here to tell us what her experience is like firsthand from not only competing, but actually winning. Um, and to tell us what this transformation has done to her both physically and mentally. Um, so I want you all to give a warm welcome to our next guest, two-time bikini, bikini champion, Ada. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I mean, you know, you fit uh, the definite mold of the type of people that we want to sit down and have a conversation with. Um, and one of the important things that I think that we do here is allow people to tell their story. And there's so many amazing everyday women just like you who are doing some incredible things and it's so inspirational. Um, and so I'm so happy to be here with you to celebrate you and your accomplishment um, you. with all of these amazing women, because I mean, that's what, honestly what we're about. You know, there's there's no competing here. It's about celebrating, encouraging and want to, wanting to see other amazing people do great things. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate you taking the time out your day to be here. Thank you so um, much. Yeah. So uh, can you tell everyone a little bit more about you? Yeah. So I am a... Uh, first generation American. I'm Nigerian American and born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. I grew up loving to just compete and stuff. So I did track all through high school, played volleyball. I played track through high school and college actually. Um, and then also did coaching for a long time. I'm an educator. So I am a teacher. Uh, my family makes fun of me because I like to teach them all the time, even if it's random. Um, so just educate Yes, yes, yes. Something that I've always loved doing. So I have to ask you, so you said you're first generation uh, Nigerian. Uh, yeah. Can you tell everybody, I believe also, what do you do professionally? Can you tell everyone know what you yeah, do? Yeah, so I am a teacher. I'm a high school social studies teacher, um, also an instructional coach. So I help teachers like practice and learn the best practices for education um, to make sure that they're doing the things that are best for their students. Oh, that's amazing. You all know, uh, I want to welcome uh, Debbie, Shana, Kim, Shannon. Welcome to the discussion. This past year, past actually 18 months has been very challenging for teachers. So when you told me that you were a teacher, I definitely was so excited to have you on. So not only you're a teacher, but you're also competing. I have no idea how you've been able to balance the two. I mean, what inspired you first and foremost to actually um, decide to start doing these competitions? Yeah. So last year, um, man, is this last year? The pandemic has like changed my sense of time. Last year, pandemic started. Is that correct? Yeah. March. Yes. March. Yes. Okay. So last year I was, I'd like noticed that I was like not working out at all. I was just mm -hmm. out of shape. I was not doing much in my, with my health. Um, and then towards June, end of May, June, I was like, okay, I got to start doing something. And I found the Massey workouts. So I started the MA45 workouts, um, which worked great during the pandemic. I didn't have to go to the gym. I was doing them at home. I didn't have any equipment. Um, and I started seeing the changes with that and continued that for six to eight months, about seven months of that through June and all the way through January. And just started liking the changes I was seeing in myself and the changes I was seeing mentally. Um, during that time, I also moved from Kansas City to St. Louis back to my hometown. And I lived near the park. There's this beautiful park here called Forest Park. And I just started walking, doing all these things health-wise, and then kind of fell off. So then okay. January comes, and I'm like, man, I'm tired of this. This has been like six months of working out and six days a week. Let me just chill for a little bit. So I did. And then this summer, 2021 summer, 
um, a good friend of mine had been posting on social media that she had been doing these WBFF competitions and had pictures of it. And there are these like beautiful bikinis and gowns. And I was like, man, that's oh. really not me, but maybe that's something that I could do, something that I should try out and something that I should try to do. Um, so I like congratulated her in the chat or in the, the comments and she texted me right away. She was like, I think this is something you can do. Like, what do you think? Why don't you try this out? And I was like, eh, I don't know, man. Let's let me let's meet for coffee and talk about it. So we met for coffee probably like two days later, and she explained the, the process a little bit to me. Um, talked about her coach. I didn't even realize there were coaches for these type of events. Um, let me talk to the coach right then, and then two days later, I it was the next Monday, and I was signed up with my coach and started working out. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes. Wow. I mean, so I think of a lot of us have had discussions uh, recently that during the pandemic, I mean, I think on average people put on between 15 and 20 pounds, even myself included. And so you're on the complete opposite <laughs> end of the spectrum. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. You really kicked it into high gear. Yes. So I want to show everyone a before picture. Um, I believe this may have been when you first started. This is, is this where, was this your starting point for the competition? So this was June, 2020. So this is when I started the MA45 workouts. Okay. With this one, yeah. So okay. year, year and what is that, three months ago. Awesome. Yeah. So how much weight have, did you actually lose? Oh man, so when you, came, yeah. So from that time in June, I was, around, I, I was around 170, 175 which was the biggest I'd been at that point in my life. Um, and uh, I really don't even own a scale. So I actually weighed myself when I went to the chiropractor two weeks ago. So the week before competition, I was about 135-ish. Wow. So about 45 pounds, somewhere around there, give okay. or take. Wow. Yeah. And so, okay, so for people who aren't familiar with the Masiaris program, this is actually how I connected with you because she has like an amazing fitness routine, yes. uh, supplements. I mean, you name it. She is just amazing. So you just got to look her up on social media. Um, so inspirational. Very, yeah, she's very inspirational. And she um, has created a great community of women. Yes. That's how I was able to connect with you. Yeah. Um, so if everyone stays tuned, we're going to show you uh, Ada's after picture as well, right before uh, she went into... Uh, I believe walk on stage, right, for the competition. So um, you mentioned about how one of your friends actually, you know, told you about the competition and actually gave you the boost of confidence. Did it immediately click with you that this is something that you could do or did you have some moments of self-doubt? I feel like, honestly, there was mom a lot of moments of self-doubt all the way until maybe two weeks before the competition. And even then it was still like, am I really doing this? Um, leading into it, quite honestly, I am a tomboy at heart. I hate to use that term, but I think that's the clearest yeah. way to express it. Um, I did not even own a bathing suit at the time that I decided to do this and had to buy one the day I talked to my coach. Cause she was like, okay, when we do our check-ins, you need to have a bathing suit on. And I was like, uh, Okay, um, I had to learn how to walk in high heels. I've never worn heels over an inch high before I did this competition. And so I ordered some shoes and they were like four and a half inches high and I, that with, with platform as well. And I was like, I ordered them and they came in and I put them on and I sent them right back. I was like, there's no way, I can't. I'm not gonna be able to walk in these at all. And then I bought another pair. I was like, okay, wait, you can do this. Yes, you can, you can learn how to walk. So I'm like watching all these videos on YouTube on like how to learn how to walk in heels, how to do like a pageant style walk. Um, so I feel like there was a lot of doubt leading up and then I've yeah. never seen these competitions. So I started watching videos of what the women look like and the coach gave me these workouts and learning how to pose and all these things. So it's just a lot to think about that you never yeah. really think about. So you've got to like smile, you've got to hold your stomach, you've got to like, turn your back and turn your side. And it's just a lot to think about in the moment. Um, and I feel like there was a lot of, um, how do I say, Eurocentricness, I think, associated with the competition. So I was like, okay, I'm a black woman. I'm about to have my hair really curly and out. Is this gonna be acceptable in the competition? Um, so a little bit of doubts and wondering about how that would be. Um, it wasn't until probably the day of the competition when I got backstage and was like seeing all the different women that I was like, oh, I fit in here. Like this is, <laughs> even when I checked into the hotel, I started seeing some of the female competition competitors, women competing. 
And I was like, oh man, like this is really exciting. This is really real. I'm seeing these people and they look great. I've seen them on Instagram I've been following these people. And now it's like, yeah. Um, yeah. So that was the point, I think, when I checked into the hotel, when I started feeling a little more confident, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But you know what? It, it may be crazy, but for me, I took away so many positive messages from what you just said, because I also took away with sometimes, you know, we have a dream of something that we want to do and we just don't feel fully prepared. Right. So you did it scared. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's that whole idea that when you step out on faith and you do something that you've been longing to do, that it's just going to feel perfect. And it never felt perfect to you. Yeah, okay. Right. Until you got up on stage. And so yes. you kept putting one foot in front of the other. Exactly. Um, and you did it. And but then an another thing that I really, really love about your story is that you wore your natural hair yes. Yes. yes and that's that seems to be who you authentically are anyway yeah um, yeah but i'm sure you know they may there may seem to be some social pressures to maybe you know change the style of your hair or straighten mm -hmm. or you know things like that so i commend you for you. i will say that it was it was a natural hair wig because i wasn't sure yeah so one of the things you have to do in this competition is you have to use their makeup artists and their hairstylists and I was like, can they do 4C hair? It's not even 4C, I have like kind of CZZ hair on my head. So I was like, are they gonna be able to do this hair? So I bought like a natural looking wig, but it was still like natural hair. And I yeah. wanted to rock that and I did. And I feel like at this point that might become my signature when I'm on the stage, I do it every time. Look, dare to be different, dare to yeah. be different. I wanna welcome Cheryl to the conversation, Jacqueline and Tracy, yes, to the natural hair. So I, I want to, okay, so Cheryl wants to know, what were your competition calories versus maintenance? Ooh, good question. So- That's a trainer right there. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, the coach gave me my meal plan every time. So I, and I did try to calculate it about four, three or four weeks before competition. So three or four weeks before competition, I was consuming about 1600 calories with my estimations based on what she had me eat. Um, and that was over the course of like five meals a day. There, some of them were very small. So my biggest meal um, was salmon, sweet potatoes, zucchini. I feel like I'm missing something. Salmon, sweet potatoes, and zucchini. I think that was just those three things. That was my biggest meal. Very small portion, but that was the biggest one. Smallest meal was like oatmeal mixed with chia seeds and four egg whites. So, but like five times a day throughout the competition, I was not really that hungry because I was eating. I was able to spread those out. Um, it wasn't until, so I'll say thankfully, but it's not really thankfully I was unemployed. So I left my job in June because I just wasn't very satisfied with that. It was just mentally not good. And I was unemployed throughout the summer until about two weeks ago, we started back to school stuff. Um, so it wasn't until the back to school stuff where I started to like, oh man, I've got to figure out how to eat the five meals in the middle of my day while I'm working. And I started oh. to free because it was like off my normal schedule. Um, but yeah, so approximately 1500, 15, 1600. And then of course, leading up to the competition, the days before you kind of cut a little bit more to lean yourself out a little bit more. And I was drinking about a gallon of water at least every day leading up to the competition. And then three days before the competition, you start dropping how much water you're drinking every day as well. Wow. I yeah. mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's intense. But, you know, I love that you mentioned your meal plan too, because I feel like carbs get such a bad rap. I know, right? <laughs> but you got to have them. You got to eat them. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I want all of us to like digest a lot of the things that she was saying that she was consuming, but I also want to highlight and I want to show everyone what your, you know, how your physique transformed, you know, right up before the competition. So, yes. I mean, wow. Yeah. Some dedication. Thank you. Thank you. And that was actually five, four weeks ago. So that was a little bit before competition, but still definitely a big change from a year before that. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So I'm sure obviously you create, increase your muscle mass. Um, yeah. Definitely leaned out as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, congratulations to you. Thank I mean, you. So how did you know? Okay, first of all, I would also back up a little bit. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about the WBFF uh, World Diva competition and why yeah. did you actually choose that platform? Yeah, so 
Um, to be honest, I chose it because that was the one my friend was doing. I didn't, yeah. I didn't, and the, but I did realize that it was not one of the like bodybuilding as mm. much. So yes, I'm, I'm more muscular than I was before. Yes, I'm, but I'm more lean. It wasn't, they have categories where the women are like really trying to bulk themselves up, but that was not my intent. And so I was happy that that was not what this platform is about. Um, as I researched it more, just even the title, um, fitness and fashion is included in that. So I was like, ooh, I'm not one to like normally get like fancy glitzy dresses, but I get to wear them here and my bikini is gonna be like very glamorous as well and bedazzled or whatever, bejeweled, is that what the term is? Yeah, I have to wear a bejeweled bikini and like sequin dresses and all this stuff. It was really great. So I think that was a huge part of it. Another big thing about the WBFF, which I heard from my friend, but also noticed immediately when I got to Vegas and even before we had a chat group with my team, I was part of a team. Um, the women are just so nice and caring and supportive. So I feel like you've been in the MA, MA group on Facebook. It's like that, it's like just keep cheering each other on. Even on the days of the competition, we're backstage laughing and joking together. I'm like passing out um, double-sided tape to the women who need it for their dresses or their bikinis, oh, yeah. helping each other out and like, yes, yeah, sis, good job. Like you rock that or look at that costume, you look great. It was just so awesome. I heard some of the other competitions are not that much like that. There's a little bit more, um, a little bit less of that than some of the other ones from what I've heard from some of the women that were there. So I was happy that this is the one I chose that has like mm. in support of people. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. really amazing. So can you um, can you walk us through your training? You know, how often mm -hmm. for someone who may be interested in doing um, something similar to what you've done and actually competing, is it t more time consuming for someone? You know, just just let us know the details. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So it is definitely time consuming and I'm still trying to figure out how to balance it all and what strategies will be best to balance it all during the school year. So in the morning, and it, it might be different depending on where you start and where you're trying to get to, but for me, it was cardio in the morning. So about 35 minutes, either on the elliptical machine or on a stair machine, which to this day, stairs are the death of me. Like I walk up yeah. one stairs and I'm about to die. So I, stair machine, I'm like doing like, let me, the first time I did, I was like three minutes, okay, I gotta take a break. Okay, three more minutes, gotta take a break. Like I still to this day, I'm struggling to get 35 straight minutes without taking at least a couple of breaks in there. So that was morning, cardio and fasted cardio. So before you eat, trying to do the cardio there. And then in the afternoon, doing some lifting. So for me, it was two days a week were lower body, uh, mainly glutes, quads, um, lower back, and then two days a week were upper body and core. And then the fifth day of the week is gonna be like kind of hit type workouts where you're doing full body stuff. And then the sixth day was repeating one of the previous workouts. So it was six days a week, cardio in the morning, lifting in the afternoon, and then Sundays were my day off, still are my day off. Yeah. Wow. that's. How did you, I mean, how did you stay laser focused and like prevent, like, I'm, did you have cravings, you know, during that time? Interesting. Oh. Yes, sometimes I did. So yeah. cravings definitely pop up. I feel like since the competition, I've had way more cravings. So I don't know if it was like the focus of like, you got to stay focused on the competition. Vegas is coming. Vegas is coming. Avoid the cravings. Um, but they still come. Like I am an avid gum chewer. So gum became my like, you need something sweet. Like, cause I wasn't doing sugar. I was using stevia instead of sugar. Um, so it was a lot of like, let me just chew a piece of gum for a little bit right now. Or let me just like do Tic Tac cause those are low calorie, no sugar. Um, so that became my like secret thing. Let me have a Tic Tac please. <laughs> Let me mix the orange and the one orange and one white Tic Tac to just get a different flavor of sweetness in my mouth. Um, and then I've also, fell in love. One of the foods on my, in one of my meals is grapefruit. Oh. And so I fell in love with grapefruit. That was like my favorite meal of the day because it was like a little bit of sweetness in there. And it was like juicy and nice. It was just, I didn't like, I hated grapefruits when I was a kid and my parents made me drink them. And probably honestly have never had a grapefruit, grapefruit since I was like four years old, but then started eating them with this competition training. And now I love them. Like, even if I stopped doing this, I will probably still eat grapefruits. 
Oh my goodness. Wow. Isn't that something? Yes. Did you have anything that, that you loved beforehand that you had to completely give up? Like processed foods or anything like that? Um, I, so I was still eating a lot of those MA type of meals, even though I wasn't doing the workouts. But I do love, I have a very big sweet tooth. So I am all about cookie dough, right? I love yeah. cookie dough. I love Snickers bars. I love um, cereal, especially the sugary cereals. Like yeah. you through a box of Lucky Charms and then like savor the crumbs of the Lucky Charm marshmallows. <laughs> like put those on the top and just like, yeah. So I love those items. I don't think I'm missing them now, but if if I get a cheat day, I've already got a list of like the items that I will get on a cheat day if my coach is like, oh, you get to eat whatever you want today. So <laughs> I just love that. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because a lot of times, you know, we may look at somebody who um, you know, is as fit as you are mm -hmm. and think that they've always been this way. You know, mm -hmm. they've just always been the type of person that doesn't eat um, you know, like sugary cereals and things like that. But that's the thing about women. I mean, when we are determined to do something. It's like we can be laser focused. Yeah, definitely laser focused in achieving your goal. And I mean, look at you. I mean, thank you. You did it. You. <laughs> so, what what do you think was like the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome during the whole um, composition? Um, biggest obstacle first was like learning to walk in heels <laughs> and yeah. learning to feel comfortable in my body in front of people. Um, so again, I was not a person, like I didn't even wear crop tops. I didn't like, like I've, I've been pretty fit looking, like even the before picture was not like really, really bad, but I didn't like wearing crop tops. I never liked wearing shorts until probably about a year ago, didn't feel comfortable wearing shorts out of the house. Um, so getting comfortable showing my body in front of people was something that was a huge obstacle. Um, Another big obstacle was so learning to walk in heels, showing my body. And then one of the biggest, which it was only for about two weeks, but again, trying to make this competition prep work while I was working was a big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really just that dedication of watching the videos to learn how to walk, trying even just walking around my house in heels all the time, like cooking in heels. Um, cooking in heels in a bikini or in my underwear, which I never like walking. I don't like walking around just in my underwear. Like, that's not <laughs> even in my own oh, house. With my body's so fun. Oh, my yeah, <laughs> yes, it was like really kind of fun. I'm like, I'm walking around. I'm like, obviously, I've got windows so nobody can see me, but I'm walking around in my underwear and then or in a bikini in high heels, making food and like practicing my strut. So like that was the way to get over that and also getting comfortable being in a bikini um, that helped with that. And then with work, it was really just, I had to buy a cooler that I could take to work with me and making sure that I had at least three of my meals with me during the day. And so meal prepping in the morning or the night before I go to work so that I have at least three meals that I'm taking with me. Cause I'm usually eating like I'll eat at seven and then I'll eat again, 9.30 or 10, eat again around 11.30 or 12, eat again around two or three, and then eat again around seven or 7.30 before I prefer like my last meal. So trying to make sure that I had food with me helped with the day-to-day -day work hours. Yeah, you did the preparation in advance. That's mm -hmm. extremely smart. So yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about um, the mental work. And mm -hmm. so the process of being more comfortable with your body. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people who know me, I've had two children. And so I've gone through the whole like, oh, my goodness, things are changing and the stretch marks. And so one of the things that I do now is I stand in front of the mirror. I bought a full length mirror and I stand in front of the mirror <laughs> just in my bra and panties. Wow. And I just like show appreciation to myself and just like take it all in. So I'm so and it's really helped. So yes, it really people, does. people may think I'm crazy, but I promise you, like just admire your body for everything that it's worth. It definitely helps. And yeah. so but I'm curious on what you did to actually create that mental shift because you were on the stage in front of, I mean, how many people were actually watching? Well, there was hundreds there and it was also on pay-per-view. So who knows how many people were watching it live from their homes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was a lot. So I think a big part of it was, like you said, stay, getting used to seeing myself because I wasn't even used to seeing myself just like, like that. Right. So yeah. getting, seeing myself, 
Um, taking pictures was totally different to me. I actually bought a ring camera with like a camera holder in it. So that picture that you just showed is the ring cam. So I didn't have to have other people there, but I had the camera and I'm like taking pictures and I'm analyzing the pictures when I'm done. I'm recording myself doing the walks and doing the posing so that I could rewatch that and just get comfortable seeing myself in those ways. So that helped a lot. Um, I had to share the videos with my coach. So that helped with that as well. Like, oh my gosh, the first few times I was like, I'm sharing pictures of myself in a bikini with this woman that I've never met except by phone and by video and by like, it was just crazy. Um, it was a lot. And then another thing that I started to do is again, like I told you, I didn't wear shorts. Even when I was yeah. out in the gym, I would wear long tights. So I started to wear like three quarter length tight shorts. And then I got to the point where I'm wearing four inch shorts or like five, I think like five inches, five inch long little tight shorts. So that's something that I still try to do regularly is just go out to the gym in those things. Um, and then sometimes I was like, okay, you have to go to the store after you work out in those same clothes or before you work out in those shorts. So just trying to go outside in those clothes to just get myself used to not only wearing those clothes around people, but also getting used to the eyes. So people are gonna look at me because I'm in these little booty shorts basically going to the grocery store or in the sometimes I would wear like a tank top when I would go to the gym um, and work out and try to be like, okay, after I work out or before I work out, you need to go to the grocery store in those same clothes just to get used to eyes being on me. Um, which still even now thinking about it, I'm like kind of cringing because it's still kind of awkward to wear clothes like that when I go to the store. But I think those things helped me feel a little bit more comfortable in myself in front of people. Yeah, yeah. It's the story that we tell ourselves because yeah, that's I think that's the biggest part. So I totally agree with you because I'm I'm very confident that people were probably even before looking at you and thinking that's a beautiful, you know, woman who's very confident, you know, but sometimes yeah, and I've done the same thing, you know. You take those stairs and you think something completely different because it's the internal work that we still need mm -hmm. to do for ourselves. Yeah. Um, and, so, and another thing is sometimes they're probably not even thinking about you. Like a lot no. of times when I'm out and about, people are probably, nobody's looking at me, but I just feel like, oh my gosh, everybody's looking like I can't. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's very important. So Cheryl has a question. She wants to know yeah. how important is it to have uh, the right coach? Ooh, good question. So for me, I think for these fitness competitions, having a coach is vital. Um, so my coach was able to get me started with the right kind of diet based on my needs, based on how I looked, based on how she felt like I needed, the distance she felt I needed to get to, to get stage ready. Um, so not only providing me with the diet, so I don't have to think about what I'm eating every day. I already have a list. Every meal is planned out already. She gives me the workouts, so I don't have to think about, okay, what leg exercise am I doing today? I just know right away, these are the things I'm doing. Not only that, but with these competitions, um, a huge part of your stage presence is how you're posing. Mm. The coach is able to give me explicit, direct feedback on, okay, when you're standing that way, you need to bend your back this way, you need to turn, or, ooh, that's a good pose, but not for you. Like, you need something a little bit different. Like, so I thought it was very, very, very extremely helpful to have a good coach to get ready for these competitions. Awesome. That's a great, that was a great question. Thank you very much for asking that, Cheryl. I appreciate that. Yep. Great tips. So I have to know, I mean, you said going into this competition, you were a little uh, nervous and apprehensive. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that you would become the winner? Honestly, so I did not think I would until close to, well, I'll say this. So throughout my training, I am a big Beyonce fan. So Beyonce was on my private playlist like, regularly when I'm working out. And I just made a playlist and played those same songs over and over again whenever I'm at the gym. Um, and so I was actually the very first person to walk on the stage. So they did a parade of athletes where it was all the men and women before the whole competition starts, get to walk and do like an S-shaped walk on the stage. I was the very first one to go out on there. I don't remember what song they played for that, but I was the first one. And so that was just like, okay, get in yourself, loosen up, just walk. And then when it was came to the 40 and up women for the bikini contest, I was the very first person as well. 
But when they did it, the first song, the song that they're playing is Diva by Beyonce. And as soon oh, as yeah. it, I was like, bruh, is this DJ in my head? Because this is one of the songs on my playlist that I practice walking in my house to. So they played that song and it was funny because they were trying to, I guess I didn't hear that they'd called me because there's a guy backstage that tells you when to go. Um, and when I rewatched the video, you hear the song start and the, the MC of the night is like, where is she? She's not coming out yet. And then the lyrics start of the song and the, the MC is like, oh, I guess she just wanted to hear the lyrics because that's when I walked out. And just like, you, I just embraced or embodied Beyonce. That was like, mm -hmm. so my first step was just like, yes, this is my jam. I got this. Yes. And so when I walked out that first, I guess, even going back before that first step, when I was in the hotel the day before the competition, uh, or the first day I got there, um, I was with my coach. We were all, all the women and men are waiting to get in the workout area of the hotel. And when I'm up there, where the coach is working with somebody else doing some posing and walking practice. And she's like, does anybody else want to practice? And I'm like, there's other people here, but I guess I'll practice because again, I need to get used to doing these things in front of strangers. And so I started practicing with her and she's giving me feedback. And there's this man sitting next to her giving feedback as well. I'm like, Ooh, I like how you did that. I like how you did that. And afterwards he introduces himself. He's like, I'm one of the judges. And in my head, I was like, whoa, he said good things about what I'm doing. He like said, he like, posed. And at first I was like, wait, is he a judge for this competition or just a judge in general? I really didn't honestly know, but it turned out that he was one of the judges of the competition. And so when I saw him down there, I was like, oh, okay. He liked what I did before. He's gonna really like what I do on the stage. I really some of the things, and I'm even better at some of these things than I was before. Um, so I think that gave me confidence that I could place top 10 and then when I got on the stage and started doing that and doing my posing, because I, I just felt really confident. I was like, I'm smiling the whole time, even though I'm not a smiler, I'm resting, you know, RBF most of the time, but I'm like smiling all the time and like posing, and like popping poses throughout, even when I'm standing at the back of the stage. Um, so I felt like I stood out to the judge and I've got this big hair on my head. So I think I stood out. So I think I'm gonna get at least top five in this. Um, and when it came to the final day, when they got us back on the stage in our gowns to present the awards, I think I just, again, became my inner Beyonce. And I was like, there's a line of Beyonce's songs. Yeah, it's like my Sasha Fierce. I need yeah. to think for myself when I'm on the stage. But when they started, they were about to call the top three in my head, the Beyonce line where she goes, um, um, I forgot, oh man, now I can't even think of it. But it's something along the lines of, I'm top two, but I'm not number two. That line went in my head and I was like, I, I think mm. I, I was like, I want to get this. Like, this is mine. If I don't get this, I'm about to like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna still stand here and look cute, but I'm gonna be really upset. So <laughs> <laughs> that athlete kicked in. Yes. One second place. Yes. Yeah. Come home with the trophy. That's awesome. Exactly. <laughs> So tell me, I mean, once you heard the announcement and they announced you as uh, the winner of the WBFF competition, yeah. like, what was the emotion and feeling? Like, what came out of you in that moment? It was, so initially it was just that shock. Sorry, my puppy is like barking. It's okay. Um, He's excited for you. Yeah, so she's like, yes, you won. <laughs> so in the initial moment, there was a few different things that came to my head. So initially I was like that shock of, oh my gosh, did I really? Did they really say my name? Um, and then after that, immediately after that, my next thought was like bittersweet a little bit because my friend who got me into this was also in the same category and she didn't get top three. So that my head also went to like, yes, I got this. And then I was like, oh wait, what about my friend? So I was, but then I was like, wait, you still got to smile. Like, don't look at her, because if you look at her, you might start to cry, because she's standing back there, and I didn't want to see like disappointment in her face or anything. Um, but it was still like just embracing that and trying to live in that happy moment um, that was there. And then there's another bittersweet moment of, because when I entered this competition, I, again, did not think I would do well. I thought I was going to fall on the stage in my heels, 
just or just be walking barefoot. So I was like, I'm not gonna have any of my friends come. I'm not gonna have my family come. So when they called my name, it was that excitement, that bittersweet, what about my friend? And then it was like excitement. And then I was like, man, I wish my family was here. Oh, do this. Or my friends were here to like cheer me on. So yeah. it was feelings. But it was also that like super excitement of like, oh my gosh, think of all the things you've done to get you here. And you just got first place in the amateur division of 40 plus, and you had never done this in your life. It was like, what? Yeah. yeah that, that's so awesome. And that's insane. It's it's just remarkable. I mean, yeah. what you able to do. But I'm sure, I mean, your friend was very excited for you. Yeah, I know, sure. I'm, she's very competitive, obviously, as well, if she's doing a competition like this. But you're her girlfriend, I'm sure. Yes. She's ready yeah. and willing to celebrate you. Yes. Um, so that, I mean, honestly, kudos to you and you know, amazing things for her, too. And I'm sure this is not the end of your journey, but I'm sure we'll yeah. talk about that a little bit later. So tell me, what was the first thing that you did immediately after um, yes. the announcement? So right after they take you off the stage, they let everybody know. So I was in the amateur division since I was just starting out with this. So what they do is they tell everybody, like, if you got, if they announce you as pro, which they gave me, they designated me as pro for the 40 plus as well as the 35 plus division. And so the next thing they did is they tell you, like, if you've been designated as pro, you need to go back downstairs to the, where they had us waiting, grab all your stuff, and you need to come upstairs and like get into the pro rooms. And I was like, what? I get to go oh. with the pro rooms? What? <laughs> so I'm super excited about that. Um, so I go get my stuff. I head up there. And then we had to wait. It was like a three-hour wait because we had to wait for all the pros to compete and do all their different categories. Um, so it was a lot of waiting, but it was also talking with the other girls and hanging with the other girls who had just become pro as well. So that was cool. And like sneaking like views of like, ooh, these are the 40 plus pros. This is what I'm going to be up against next time because I will be back. Those are my competition. Okay, okay. Like, look at you. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so there was a lot of fun. Um, when the whole competition was over, they did have um, the pro meetings. So we got to find out what it means to be pro, what we can do, what we can't do. Um, and then there was like a red carpet. So we got to take pictures with the founders of the company, of the organization. And then with my coach, finally got to have some good pictures with her. So that was good. And after all of that was done, I called up my sister, um, who was still awake, surprisingly, because I'm in Vegas. It was like midnight Vegas time. So about two o'clock AM central time, um, talked with her and then went back in the standing outside. So outside, like people are like cheering me and saying, oh my gosh, congrats. And we saw you, we were cheering for you too. Walk back inside um, and then headed back to my, I was actually rooming with my friend who got me in. So I was like, okay, let me like calm down a little bit. Cause I don't want to be like too overjoyed and she might be upset. Cause I didn't, hadn't seen her since we left the stage. Oh yeah. Um, so that night I actually had the, one of the best burgers I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I'm like, what'd you eat? Yes. yes. <laughs> if you've seen the show, um, it's a new show on Netflix, Fried Crispy and something. It's a new show where he goes around different cities and finds like fried foods that are just delicious. And so there's this burger that they have at the, I think it's called like 50 50 or something bar, uh, bar and grill or something. And it's this burger. The bun, first of all, is coated in gold flakes. It's got bacon on it and the bacon is coated in gold flakes. Mm. And it was just, I don't even know if it's the best burger I've had or if I just haven't eaten good food in a long time because I've been on these competition diets. Yeah. So I ate that burger. And then the next morning is when I really, it really all sunk in, I feel like. Um, so I woke up, my roommates had left to go to the airport and head back home and I'm in the hotel by myself getting ready to pack and all these things. And I just had the best solo dance party that I've ever had, like in my, looking it in my hotel, like you did this, like this is, you won. Like I'm looking at my plaques and my medals and I'm just like, that's yours, like that's yours. And I'm just dancing around the whole hotel. Uh, so it was great, it was great. That's so awesome. Do it with my friends and family, they're with me, but it was good to do that little party solo. You celebrated yourself as yeah. you should, as yeah. you should. You know, I have to ask you, I mean, you've obviously accomplished so much in this last year. Um, this past year, especially during the pandemic, has been very challenging emotionally for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, we still want to encourage people to dream and, you know, to just live their life to their fullest. So, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. What would you what advice would you give to someone else who has a dream that they want to accomplish um, to help motivate them and inspire them to do it? 
Yeah, I think the biggest steps when you have a dream or a vision of something you're doing is to visualize it. Like see, set that goal, write it down somewhere, visualize it, whatever it is that you need to do. And the next big step is to not give up if you have setbacks. Not give up if you have like, oh man, I ate those like two or five or 20 Hershey's Kisses. Or it is. Like I had the figures or whatever it is that you slipped on or... I didn't like get the client, whatever it is that you're doing, like don't like beat yourself up over it. Like dust yourself off and try again, as Aaliyah said, right? So keep on going with it. Um, one of my quotes, so on the platform, when you when you did this, you had to fill out a form, a bio form. And at the end they said like, what's something else you want us to know about you? And I put one of my favorite quotes, which was, today I will not stress over things I cannot control. So like, don't stress over things that are out of your control. Like, do as much as you can yourself. Um, if you slip up, that's okay. You keep going, right? Mm -hmm. so there may be a day where you don't get that workout in, or maybe a day where you're you're running less than you did before. You have like fewer clients right now than you did last month for whatever you're doing. Just keep on going. It's it'll it'll get better with your hard work and dedication and your your commitment. And I feel like also it's doing those. Um, consistently, because when you do them consistently, it just becomes a habit. Well, like at this point now, it's just a habit for me to get up super early in the morning, do cardio, come back from work, go do my lifting in the afternoon. It's just like a habit. It's just eating these five meals a day, the same food every day for seven weeks, eight weeks now. It's just become a habit. It's it just you just get used to it. That is awesome and phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal advice. Anyone else who has a dream of something that they want to accomplish, record this video, save it. Actually, we're going to post it on our Facebook page so it'll forever be there. Um, but play this back um, because that it was great advice. Visualize it, take action on it, and do not give up no matter what happens. I just thank you, Ada. That was beautiful. Thank you. So what do you say to people who think it's too late for them to accomplish something or a dream of theirs? Not at all. Like even in this competition, one of the great things, first of all, I'm 42, right? I did this first time competing in anything like this at the age of 42. Another great thing about even in this fitness competition, there was one of the women there was 55 and decided just like two years ago to start doing these competitions and she's rocking it, right? So it's never too late to do these things. You hear about women who are like older, who are just starting to do other things as well in their life, um, whether it's directing a play or trying to write a movie or starting a business, starting a platform like Bloom, right? You don't have to be like 20 years old to be doing these things. Age is just a number. Um, do whatever you like, whatever you dream of, just put your mind to it, put the energy to it, do whatever financial things you need to do to make it work. Mm -hmm. And you got this. age is just a number. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice too. You know, I, I always think, you know, even with my endeavors, I never want to get to that age where it's just like, you know, where it's, it's, I'm taking my last breath and I did not give it all that I had. You know what I mean? So, you know, guys, we just cannot take life for granted and the opportunities and the visions that are put in our head. We just really have to pursue them um, because there's greatness in all of us. And so iron sharpens iron. So Ada, I'm so happy to be able to be here with you because you are definitely an inspiring woman. Thank you. Um, and so tell the people, can you tell people how important it is for you to now make sure that you take control over your life and prioritize yourself? Oh is that God. something that's changed uh, since the competition? Yeah, so I feel like there was many, many years ago, I shouldn't say many, many, but there was a few years ago where I read Chandra Rhyme's book, The Year of Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that was a big thing where I'm like, hey, just try this, just do this thing. I'm also living in the no. So no is also a great thing to say. So I've, I've like learned to say no to different things and also learned to say yes to some things that I may not normally say yes to. Um, so I feel like those are big things that I've learned and I'm trying to adopt in my life more consistently to take care of myself and honor myself. Um, whether that means like, ooh, I am going to have JOMO instead of FOMO, like the joy of missing out. I am perfectly okay with that sometimes. Yeah. I am not doing all of the things. Sometimes I just want to come home and take a nap or three. Um, so definitely taking care of myself and, and staying positive and, and just really living how I want to live and doing things how I want to do and trying to surround myself with people 
yeah. locally, social media, wherever they are, that are positive people. I don't need negativity in my life as much as possible. I mean, there's going to be negative people. But if I'm choosing you to have you in my life and around you, mm, no. Exactly. I totally agree with you. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the way to live. <laughs> and that's the way to be, especially when you want to get things done and accomplish yes. what you've accomplished. Um, so what do you, tell me about what do you see when you look in the mirror now versus what you saw before? Man, that was a good one. So I feel like I, again, I didn't look at myself before. For the most part, it was like, I'll look at myself to wash my face. And even then it was like, let me wash my face down here and dry it off and just put moisturizer on it. So I've gotten used to looking at myself and just feeling like, this is a 42 year old body. You've done a lot in your life. You have like major back problems, but look at you, you're still doing these things. You still look good. Um, I feel like that confidence has also shined through to other people. Um, I feel like, I didn't really find myself attractive as much before. Not that, and, and again, I don't want to say that I feel more attractive because mm -hmm. I've like out. Um, I actually feel like I, I'm, I'm looking forward to my coach bulking me up a little bit more because I feel like I'm a little too lean right now. Um, competition leanness is different from every day. Yeah. Right? Um, so used, getting used to that, but I also feel like just feeling more confident in myself because I'm like walking around in my bikini because I'm getting used to seeing my body and liking my body has helped me to feel better around other people as well. I feel like I have gotten more compliments from people. So I'm like in the dating world and just going on about and doing things. So I feel like I'm seeing more people compliment me on things and on my appearance. I need those, but it's nice to hear sometimes. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, I think that's more because of the confidence that I'm exuding Yeah. more than like how I look. I'd like mm -hmm. to think so. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that that's it. Um, can you tell us also, have, have you ever taken some time to think about your mission in life mm -hmm. or have you, and have you redefined your mission and the purpose of, you know, how you carry yourself and the things that you do day to day now. Yeah. So I'm probably I'm trying not to tear up with this. So I've gotten like a lot of comments from people on my social media posts about my, cause I posted about my performance on there. One of the ones that st stood out to me the most was, um, Oh, I'm gonna try not to cry. One of my former okay. students, I know it's okay to cry, but I'm like, I don't want to cry. Yeah. I hate crying. I really do hate crying because my nose gets all snotty, my eyes get all red. I look like I've been like, I'm you like, want to see my ugly cry. I've done it on <laughs> here before. It's gonna be nothing compared yeah. to yours. Oh my god. So, but one of my former students in the comments, she wrote that she was like. Yes, Miss Ebay, look at you pushing yourself just like you always taught us to do when you were teaching us. Like you always told us to keep pushing beyond what we thought we could do. And I was just like, oh my goodness, like that is exactly what I've always taught my students. And now I don't think I was doing that myself until now all the time. So it was like, man, I used to be telling all these kids to do these things, but was I really living that? Whereas now I feel like not only with this competition, but also with different things I've done in my life in the past few years um, that I'm more living that, like push yourself, say yes, say no to the things, um, do things that are good for yourself, even if it's not what you thought was good for yourself before, even if you're not sure how to accomplish those things. Um, so my mission is to continue leading by example in those kind of ways for the students that I teach, for the teachers that I coach, for the people that interact with me on social media, for whoever, just to like keep living positively, keep pushing people to just not stress over things you can't control, just yeah. do things, right? And, and keep pushing. So I, that is my mission and to inspire people, even if it's not connected to fitness, because that's yeah. not for everybody, but whatever your goal is, whatever your dream is, keep pushing towards that. Yeah, Cheryl says she loves it, love, love, love it. You know, I mean, what you just said is 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 very challenging to do, but I can totally relate to that because I used to tell, especially when I became a mother, so I used to tell my daughter, baby girl, you can be and do whatever you want, you yeah, know? Yeah. And so right around the time she was two years old, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, hold up, I'm a hypocrite because I have these big lofty dreams about starting a business and I'm not acting on it 
And here I am telling her that she can do whatever she wants. And so the biggest thing that influences people, as you know, is our actions, mm -hmm. uh, our words. And so I'm sure that in, by virtue of you doing this competition and winning, especially in your natural, authentic self, you know, taking up space with yeah, your hair. Literally. That, <laughs> literally, yeah, literally. Um, that you're you're inspiring, you're, you're motivating people, and it's going to continue. And so I'm just happy that you did the work um, on yourself because it's just going to multiply to other people. Yeah, I truly mean that. And so what's next for you? Tell me. Man, yeah, so I have been designated now. I'm no longer an amateur in the WBFF. I'm a pro. So um, I want to get on that pro stage. I'm not sure which will be my next competition, whether it will be this year or next spring. Um, talking with my coach this week about when that will be. Uh, also got to look at the finances because it is quite expensive. The bikinis yeah. are not cheap and outfits are not cheap. Registration is not cheap. Um, so just thinking about all of that and thinking about where my body is, but I want to get in that pro stage and I want to place at least top 10 at some point on the pro stage, if not the top of the podium, right? So those are my big goals within the competition. Um, and then continuing to, to work, do work in the schools, right? So making sure that our students, one of the themes of the school district I work with is, is radical love. And I want to show the students that radical love and help them feel okay and loved in the school so that they can then go out and achieve the dreams and goals that they set for themselves. Mm, I love that. That is so beautiful. You know, it's... Yeah. I'm telling you, it's been like an absolute joy to sit here and talk with you. Uh, I cannot believe that it's been almost like an hour. No, no, <laughs> I know, it's really time, right? That but, did fly by. You know, I can't express to you enough um, how amazing it is that you stepped out um, on confidence and faith and actually accomplished something that you dreamt of doing. Yes. Uh, it's amazing to be able to celebrate you. I'm sure your your parents and your sisters and all of your family are very excited about the work that you're doing. Um, and then, of course, thank you again for being there every day with children as an educator. Um, I said earlier that she's a high school out as a high school teacher. That takes a lot of work, a lot of dedication, a lot of discipline. And we couldn't do as parents, you know, we couldn't do the work that we do with our children without the work that you're doing with them in school. So I thank just thank you, you um, for that as well. And so I'm just so excited to continue to follow you and your journey and just wish you well and just continue to celebrate you. Um, but for people who want to continue to follow along with you as well, do you have a way like social media that people can keep in contact with you? Yeah, so I can definitely share those with you. So on Facebook, you can find me with my name, Ada Ebay. On Instagram, um, it is at Wanya, N-W-A-N-N-E -N -N -E dot E-D-A. So a combination of my first and last name on there as well, on Instagram. Awesome. Well, I mean, thank you all for joining us today. That was another great episode with Ada. I am so excited that we were able to join together to celebrate you. And thank you for being so vulnerable with us. Yes. If anyone, um, you know, is interested in competing, I'm sure Ada will definitely, you know, point you in the right direction. So yes. definitely reach out to her. Let's continue. Uh, she's mentioned that she's going to continue to uh, compete. So let's send her our well wishes and celebrate her through our entire journey. And I love you all. And I want to thank you for blooming with us. And stay tuned for next week because we have some more amazing discussions to come. Thank you so much. This was great. Thanks.